Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I've got a really fun match for you. I built a team using some Pokemon that I really just kind of wanted to test out. Some stuff that I haven't used in a long time, and they're actually really fun. As always, if you are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps out the videos, and I would appreciate it. Let's go ahead and jump into the match. So my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Fire-type Tauros as I decide to toss out Ariados. This thing is an absolute legend. It does not enjoy really being up against a Fire-type Bull, but Ariados is essentially here to set up Sticky Web. Now looking at their team, I can pretty freely set up the Sticky Web here. I am Focus Sash, so knowing that a Raging Bull is coming is totally fine. Uh, Ariados does get knocked down to that Sash, but it's going to allow me to guarantee that their team is going to be stuck in some webs and be all sticky-like. Now, this team does kind of rely on having that speed uh, advantage, as some of the Pokemon here, uh, you'll, you'll kind of see what I'm working with. So, I'm gonna end up just going for the Sucker Punch here. I don't really have much that wants to switch into the Tauros at this point, so I go for the Sucker Punch, and Ariados is gonna be nice and sacrificed, so uh, that is fine, because that opens up the door for a free switch in. And as I'm looking at the matchup here, there's one Mon that sticks out. The thing has probably never stuck out before, but that, Ladies and gentlemen, is the absolute legend Hypno. This thing will both steal your daughter from the forest and whoop that ass in a Wi-Fi battle. So I'm going to see if I can actually get old Bart Simpson to do what this thing is supposed to do. So essentially, I can bring this thing in and have a really good matchup against the Tauros. And what that's going to do is basically allow me to set up a free substitute. So of course, Tauros wants none of this smoke and they're going to end up switching out here. And their best answer to the Hypno defensively at least, is going to be the Uxie. So, all Lemonhead ass comes in here as I set up a substitute, and being behind the beanbag puts me in a great position with the Hypno. Knowing that Uxie really just does not have any offensive pressure against Hypno, I can kind of freely start to set up. So, I'm going to end up going for the Nasty Plot. Now listen, Hypno is the last Pokemon on the Poke World that you want to be thinking nasty thoughts, as they actually just end up going for the Stealth Rock. So, I'm totally fine with that, they get their hazards, but I'm still behind the substitute, and now I've got that plus two special attack, and uh, Hypno is looking like he's in full form at this point. I know that uh, with plus two, I can do some pretty decent damage to this Uxie, where in return, again, I don't think it has any type of coverage uh, against the Hypno. So, at this point, what I can now do is essentially just commit the Terra. Now, this thing is supposed to be Terra Fairy, where I can then get a nice little stab on the Draining Kiss, get some health back, and with Hypno's kind of natural bulk anyway, it's actually a pretty big menace to take care of. So, they're going to actually end up switching directly into the Jolteon. Uh, that is like the only Pokemon that even under Sticky Web is going to still be faster. Um, but, I do know that, again, I'm pretty specially defensive and this Hypno is kind of built for this. So, I go for that Fairy Terra, I put a little heart on my head uh, just, to lure, just to lure you in even further. And uh, a Draining Kiss is going to do a whole bunch of damage. Uh, the reason why we run Draining Kiss is it helps with the longevity of this thing, and with that stab, uh, it does cover for uh, a lot of a lot of answers to this thing. So the Draining Kiss comes in, smooch you right in your spiky back, and that is going to be a nice little two-hit KO. So I am nice and comfy and safe behind my substitute at the moment, but I'm thinking that I'm going to need a little bit more firepower if Hypno wants to kind of pull off what I would like it to. So I'm going to go for the Nasty Plot. Now the reason is I can set up another Nasty Plot, get my special attack to the moon, and then even after they break the substitute, after they hit me with a Thunderbolt next time, I can actually just heal all that damage off uh, with the Draining Kiss plus the Leftover. So I sacrificed the Beanbag here to thank a little bit more Nasty Thoughts, and uh, that is exactly what we are looking for. Being behind the substitute does put this thing in a way better position, but I do feel like I, at full health I can essentially uh, still handle a lot of their team. So they go for the Thunderbolt again. That knocks me down to nearly half with the, uh, with the Life Orb and uh, I am able to just kind of give him another little smoocheroo, and that is going to take care of the Jolteon. So fastest Pokemon out of, out of the way on their team is solid, um, and after the re recovery, not as much as you would like, but after the leftovers, I'm still in a spot where it doesn't look like they actually have much on their team that can kill me in one hit. So Hypno is still feeling good on a Wednesday, having a time. So now their free switch is going to end up being the Spydop. So Spydop's coming in is a little bit interesting. I figure this thing doesn't really have much to touch me, and I can kind of freely uh, knock this thing out and heal in the process. Spydops on teams is generally going to be there for Sticky Web support as well, uh, so that's kind of what I have imagined they're going to do, but I just go for the Draining Kiss, of course. I'm just out here uh, just basically spreading the love around, for real. It actually doesn't end up killing the Spydops, which is kind of crazy. I imagine it was probably Focus Sash anyway, but they actually take this opportunity to set up the Sticky Web of their own, which I'm thinking, hey, that's kind of interesting as... 
they still don't really seem to have a direct offensive answer to the Hypno, but I am fine with that. So uh, before this thing goes down, it actually goes for the Silk Trap. And it's kind of a crazy move that you don't see all that often. Essentially, it's a protect that when you touch it, uh, it drops your speed. So Hypno being at minus one speed is actually relatively important because I have the Sticky Web up on their side, but Hypno at minus one is actually gonna be slower than a lot of their stuff even after they uh, take that sticky web uh, drop. So I end up going for a substitute again. I'm thinking, wait, what this this thing literally can't break my substitute. So I just bring out the doll once again as this thing goes for the spikes. They're feeling confident that they will be able to take care of the hypno one way or another. But regardless, behind the sub, I am still, I'm still feeling pretty safe. Let me tell you, I'm actually not as safe as I think I am. But I go for the draining kiss here. Uh, I do actually still go first uh, because we're actually both at minus one, and that is going to take care of the spike up. So I think basically it came in. It got me to minus one speed and it set up both spikes and the sticky web. So I'm relying a lot on Hypno for the kind of carry in this match. And if they can get through this thing, I'm going to have an interesting matchup uh, moving forward. So after a little bit of leftover recovery, I am behind a substitute and at full health and I have plus four special attack. So we're having ourselves a good old Hypno time as they're going to end up going into the Uxie once again. So I'm still thinking. If this Uxie didn't have much to hit me earlier, it probably doesn't now. As they come in, they go for the future site. So this dude is straight up preparing for the future. With all the hazards set up, the future site, I'm thinking, okay, I, that's still kind of fine with me. As I can go for the draining kiss here, and it's going to be a nice little 2 KO on the Uxie. Keep in mind, hey, Hypno is not the most powerful Pokemon. But being able to 2 hit KO Uxie is still pretty solid. And they end up going for the Psychic here. So of course, I don't resist that anymore, being just pure fairy type. But surprisingly, it actually doesn't even break my substitute, which is kind of crazy. So they set up that future site. I will be taking that damage. Uh, but one more Draining Kiss is going to take care of the Uxie. And we are straight running through a team with the Hypno right now. And it couldn't be, it could not be going better. So uh, now they get a free switch. Or of course, Revenge Switch into the Clyotzer. Now this thing uh, is pretty damn powerful. But under the Sticky Web, I'm thinking, hold on, I'm actually faster, but then I realize I'm actually at minus one because of uh, because of that freaking silk trap. So this thing does go for the water pulse. Uh, Mega launcher just throws some water at me, drowns the bean bag, and that is going to break the substitute. So um, it was actually still really nice that that sub wasn't broken from that psychic as now I can get a draining kiss on, on this thing. And I'm thinking maybe we grab the hypno kill here. Unfortunately, Clydeser lives it barely in the red. And now I actually take the future side attack, which does a solid chunk to me, but uh, after leftovers, I still know that I can take an attack from the Clitzer, but it's actually feeling like the momentum has kind of shifted at this point. With my sub being gone, it can hit me with one more water pulse. While it doesn't quite kill me, it knocks me to the point where I'm going to be able to be easily taken care of with something else. So they actually also get the confusion, which is kind of funny. Um, but luckily, I actually do not kill myself, and I end up going for the Drain Kiss instead. And I'm, I'm straight up running out of Drain Kisses over here. My lips are tired, bro, and down goes the Clitzer. Hypno on an absolute tear, but it is likely going to come to an end here because I am going to be slower than everything they have and they can pretty much pick me off at this point. So eat a little bit of a chunk of apple just as a last ditch effort there. Puts me at 51 HP uh, and Hypno is unfortunately not quite bulky enough to take care of a physical attacker like the Zangu. So Zangus is the main Pokemon at this point I am very worried about. So here's the thing. It comes in, it takes the sticky web. Uh, but of course, this thing is still going to be faster, and it's able to finish me off with a facade. So, looking at my team, my matchup is not great against Zangus, especially because I don't have the speed advantage with them having their sticky web up. So, I have to kind of try to develop a plan on beating the Zangus, as it actually now gets its toxic orb, and this thing is going to be a menace with facade. So, my best switch in at this point is to go into Intimidate Arbok. Um, if I can just get an attack drop off on this thing, I know that I should likely be able to take a facade here at minus one. So we get all caught up in some sticky web and some spikes. And uh, the chip damage is honestly looking like it's pretty close to being able to live a facade. So essentially with that Intimidate, I'm feeling good. I can go for the scale shot here, grab a speed boost and outspeed next turn. But they are actually going to commit their Terra at this point. And it is going to be the Terra normal, which is worst case scenario because with the added stab boost from the Terra Normal, a facade definitely has enough to kill me now. And that is exactly what this thing is going to do. A facade is definitely enough to take care of the Arbok. And that is horrible news because the Arbok Intimidate switch in was kind of my best answer to the Zangus. 
and this thing is still at full health. So, gotta figure out my next course of action here, and actually it turns out, so Noctowl does not touch the sticky web, meaning I should theoretically be faster here, uh, that thing having its speed dropped and me not. But here is the situation. This Noctowl is built to go for hypnosis, miss it on purpose, and activate blunder policy, which then gives me a two times speed. So I'm not running any speed investment on this Noctowl, and that allows their Zangus to just straight up outspeed. And I found myself in a situation where, damn, I, the, the, the tables have turned. And that Noctowl, I honestly kind of forgot that I didn't have speed investment, but after looking through and the details of the team, yeah, I, I definitely am just counting on blunder policy on that thing, plus sticky web. Um, and that is unfortunate, because now I do still have my defensive options. I have the uh, Colossal, and I have the Dusknoir in the back. So I'm thinking that this thing definitely has coverage with the close combat, and it could certainly go for that close combat. But after... The minus one from the Intimidate, they're actually just going to go ahead and switch the Zangus out. So, their final Pokemon other than the Zangus is the Toro. So, I actually end up going for the Flamethrower here. This thing does switch in, of course. Um, it is going to get caught in the Sticky Web, but I, I should have clicked the Earth Power. It Essentially, it didn't really matter. It's both the same damage against the Zangus, but uh, thinking about the Toro switch and Earth Power would have been a good play. Uh, but I'm actually thinking that, you know, I can probably still take an attack from this Tauros, regardless, or depending on what it wants to go for. So, it eats some leftovers a little bit, and I am still at enough HP, but I'm not at enough to the point where I can switch out and then back in uh, and take some more spikes. So, this thing goes for the Stone Edge, and I am able to live it, which is actually going to activate my weakness policy, which is amazing. And that gives me enough power to where this Tauros is going to go down to the Earth Power. With that sharp boost in the special attack, we are strong as hell. But, we are too slow. The Tauros does go down, and now it's basically one versus two. They have the Zangus under the Sticky Web, and I have uh, this dead-ass Colossal plus a Dusknoir. So, essentially what this match is going to come down to is, do they have the, the coverage uh, to be able to hit the Ghost Type? A lot of the time when people run with Zangus, they don't have an answer for Ghost Types. This thing does get access to Knock Off, and it's going to come down to, does this thing have the move necessary to finish off my last mod. So, Thomas the Tank does go down. Steam Engine is out of here. And I have essentially a Dusknoir and a Dream. This thing is getting whittled down by its poison. Unfortunately, I can't quite go for the Shadow Sneak priority, obviously, because of the normal type. Um, and I have to bring in the Dusknoir here and just kind of hope for the best. So, I'll tell you what, when I was setting up with Hypno, I did not see this end game coming. And it has come right down to the wire here at this point. I get hurt by some spikes. I frisk him and find his life orb or toxic orb that we can just already see, and I just go, I have to click Ice Punch here, which with the Choice Band should be enough plus the poison damage, but they do carry the knockoff, and that is going to be enough to take care of the Dust Norse. So that was truly one of the greatest reverse sweeps of all time. Like, I've never been on the receiving end of a reverse sweep quite like that, but uh, that was still just an interesting match. Uh, shout out to the dude for making it happen, and sometimes that's, that's how the way Pokemon goes. Uh, anyway, still had a lot of fun with this team. Let me know what you guys thought, and I will see you next time. Peace out.